will be today creating a pendant for you that I've entitled the Supernova Pendant. It's going to be featuring our Iris Duos, which are our brand new check glass bead that we introduced, as well as a cabochon. The cabochon that I am using in this design is the Cabochon Parpuka, and it's a 25 millimeter cabochon. In the example piece, I used a collection of kind of sun colors, hence that supernova, with the opaque yellow Picasso and then the copper and the orange and the 15 O's. Instead, I'll be switching to kind of a cooler little color arrange here, and I'm going to be using the opaque aqua bronze. Again, this is a 25 millimeter cab. These are the Cabs Parpuka, which you may be familiar with some of the other Parpuka designs, and this will be going in the center of the actual pendant. Around the pendant, we will be having iris duos. If you need any of these materials to do the supernova pendant, below the video at the date that the video was published, there's a little down arrow and a show more button. If you click on that down arrow, it'll give you links to some of these products that we carry online, and you can purchase from me at potomacbeads.com. For the actual pendant, you're going to need up to three colors of your Iris Duo beads. That being said, if you want, you can do the pendant all in one color. It's up to you. For the pendant, the primary color is going to be used three times as I build out kind of that peyote style of the actual pendant outer edge. I'm going to be using Jet Bronze as my primary color, and you need 36 of the primary color of your Iris Duos. My secondary color of the Iris Duos will just be used one time as a background behind the pendant. Because of that nice picasso bronze look, I'm going to mimic that with the Lila Gold luster in the Iris Duos, and we'll need 12 of those. The Lila Gold Luster, I think, will also brighten up the pendant a little bit rather than keeping it dark with all of the jet bronze. In addition to that, we're going to need 24 of our third color, which in this example piece here is the gold. I'm going to be using the White Baby Blue Luster to make it have a little bit more of a blue-green tint to it. In order to achieve that as well, I'm using 15 O's and Miyuki brand is what I've preferred to use. And this is the transparent gray rainbow in the 15 O. Everywhere that you see orange in this example piece is going to be this transparent gray rainbow, which gives a nice green, gray, blue cast off. The gold beads in the sample are actually a uh, Toho spacer bead or the Toho Demi Rounds rather. You can also use a Mayoki Spacer Beat in it as well. I'm using the size 11L of the Toho Demi Round. And this is the matte nickel color of the 11L. Here it's the galvanized gold color there of the 11L. In addition to those, I have some 11 OC beads that I'll be using. The 11 O's are only used in the center very portion of the pendant, as well as along the back. Here in the back example, I also use some 8 O's. I'm going to switch out and just to use 11 O's in the back, so that way you don't require so many different types of materials. So the 11 O's are used along the back of the pendant, as well as just on that outer crust. I'm going to brighten it up yet again by using the gold color of the 11O Mayuki brand CB. Also to have handy, you'll want a thread and a needle. I'll be using 0 .006 Wildfire beading thread in my green color, which will be masked very well behind those greenish blue seed beads. In addition to that, I want you to have a size 12 English beading needle handy and ready to go and you're going to use one of those beading needles. I also have a thread zap. This is the new thread zap ultra I'm upgrading and you will use that to burn off the end of the thread and actually take the thread off your spool. Because I like to use that, I also like to have a needle nose pliers handy to flatten out the thread in order to thread my needles easier. As I get started, I also want to have a nice workable surface. That way the area doesn't become too cluttered. We are going to start the pendant with our inner edge here, and then we will build up from there. On your bead mat originally to start the supernova pendant, I want you to have your 11 or your iris duos 
your 11 O's and your 15 O's in your designated color available and ready to use. Go ahead and get five feet of your thread onto your needle and we'll get ready to get started with our supernova pendant. To begin the pendant, we're actually going to be starting um, on the second edge of our iris duo bead, so kind of that outer edge, and we'll add the inner edge as we close up the cabochon. So I'm flipping the actual project over so you can see the back and the easier view of what we're going to, what we're going to do to get started. We're going to start by adding our second row of our iris duos. The iris duos are two-sided. They have a side that is rounded and a side that is flat. You're going to want to make sure as you do this that we are going through the first hole of the iris duo with the iris duo facing up. I'm using that white lila gold luster as my iris duo for that center brass or that center bronze color. In addition to that, I have my 15s and my 11s out to create the, that outer edge of a pattern. The first thing I want to do is pick up a bead that is not part of my project and put it on my thread and needle. Let that bead drop back about three inches from the base and then take your needle and thread back through that bead two times. This is a stop bead. The stop bead will later come off the project, which is why I use a bead that is not in the project so I remember to take it off. From here we're going to start a very simple pattern of a 15, 11, 15, and then adding my iris duo. Again, face up, going from right to left through the bottom hole. Again, continuing that pattern, 15, 11, 15, continuing to add more iris duos. So this is gonna be the first rotation of the iris duos we add adding in our 12 iris duos, all facing the same way, separated out by this three grouping of C beads. So go ahead and continue adding in those 12 iris duos with the C bead spacers. Once you add your last of that row of your iris duos on, you're going to end with an iris duo because we started with seed beads. We're now going to bring this into a circle by taking our thread and needle back through the 15 right next to the stop bead, going away from the stop bead, as well as the 11, the next 15, and that first iris duo. And then bring the thread and needle out. Give a nice tight pull, and then position your iris duos so you make sure that they are all facing the correct direction with that rounded edge facing up. That's gonna be our outermost edge here of where the bronze iris duos are in the actual cab. You can see the cab's gonna almost sit at the outer edge right on top of those beads, which is going to be held in place then by this netting that we're creating. The next thing we're going to do is create that netting using our demi rounds and getting ready then to add in our innermost section of our iris duos in the bronze color. To get in position to add our bronze and to work with the demi rounds, we're going to bring our thread and needle so it's coming out of the seed beads, or I'm sorry, coming out of the iris duo here. We're going to circle around basically and add our next grouping of our iris duos. So the iris duos are going to be added with the 15 O's and the demi rounds. So go ahead and get ready with your demi rounds and your 15 O's on your bead mat. Coming out the iris duo, we're going to get ready again to add that next layer of iris duos, which are actually inside the layer that we just did. Coming out the iris duo and coming out that first hole that we already went through, you're going to add three of your demi rounds. And then going through the iris duo, we're going to go through with the bump facing up, we're going to go through 
the right hand hole. Three more demis go on our needle. And then we're going to skip over to the next iris duo and go through that bottom hole as well. And you give a nice tight pull then. You're going to notice that the first or the second iris duo color that you're adding kind of sits at a funky angle between those two. Next again, three demi rounds, one iris duo, three demi rounds through the next hole, through the next iris duo, through that same first hole. And again, it's going to kind of sit at a funky angle because what's going to happen is these are going to fold inward around your actual cab as the outer edge of the iris duos are going to poke out. So continue around the circle adding in 12 of your bronze iris duos with the three demi rounds on each side and then continuing to the next iris duo from the first loop going through that same first hole. So here I have three in position and I will get ready to add the next nine. So as you put the last of your iris duos in place, you're going to go up through the first three demi rounds as well as through that first hole of the beginning jet bronze bead. Pulling the thread and needle tight then, you can kind of see that it looks a little crazy as you're working with it. From here, we're gonna bend all of the jet iris duos in towards the center by stepping up and going through the second hole of all of the iris duos. On this outer edge of the iris duo that my thread is coming out of, I'm going to reverse the thread and take the needle through the innermost hole, which is going to expose a little bit of thread on the outer edge. By the time we add in the 15 OC beads, you will not see this. At this point now, I'm going to take one 11 o and each time then I'm going to sew through my next jet bronze iris duo and pull the thread and needle. From here, add your next 11 o and sew through the next one. This is going to establish then that inner core and kind of push those demi rounds off to the sides a little bit. So go ahead and around the whole entire inner core circle, adding an 11 0 between each of your jet bronze demi rounds through that second hole that has yet to be used. So continue around here, adding in that 11 0 and pulling that center row in towards the middle. Adding in the last 11 0 CB then, I'm gonna sew through the first iris duo in that jet bronze color that my thread was on the side of, as well as the first 11 0 and pull nice and tight. Again, that is gonna be my inner row for my cab to actually sit inside of. So I just made my base basically for the cab to sit and hang out inside of. As I go around now, I'm going to kind of finagle a little bit and push those little demi rounds up so they look like they're in that nice V pattern around the edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my thread and needle around this whole center line one more time, establishing and making sure that it's nice and tight. So I'm going to take the thread and needle again and move that stop tail out of the way. I'm actually going to tuck it to the back. And then take that thread and needle the whole way around through all of those beads one more time. That's going to help to create that nice kind of flat section. And right now you're going to notice that the iris duos are kind of sitting at an angle. We are going to force them to sit flat against the cab, which is going to push that next row of iris duos also flat. So they're going to kind of sit right along the edge flat. So we are going to 
make that happen by pushing in the iris duos as we go ahead and then net in the back to create our bezel. After we recreate the back bezel here and get our cabochon trapped, then we'll add our next layers of our iris duos as we expand the supernova pendant. From this center section after reinforcing, I want my thread and needle to come out one of the bronze iris duos. From here, I'm going to step down to the bottom hole of that same iris duo, giving a nice tight pull that'll kind of lock those iris duos in place. From here, take your thread and needle down one of the sections of the demi rounds, so down those three demi rounds, and then down into the iris duo that's next to it and throw. We're going to be creating our back and basically closing up our bezel by creating a netting along the back edge here. Just like we did coming out of the iris duos along the back, or along the front rather, and adding in the demi rounds and the iris duos in the top, we are going to come out the iris duos and add in five of our, or coming out the C beads rather, add in five 11 O's and then go into all of the C beads. So with your thread and needle, after you come out the demi round, or after you come out the iris duo rather, go into the 15, the 11, and the 15 that are next to it and bring your thread and needle out. Once you bring the thread and needle out, add five 11s onto the needle. The five gold beads go onto the needle, skip over the iris duo, and go into the next grouping of C beads, that next three grouping. You can see I kind of moved it off to the side so I could easily thread it, push those C beads towards the back. Again, when you're coming out, then those C beads, five 11s go on, skip over the iris duo, and sew through the next C beads. So this continues 12 times, making sure that those C beads sit towards the back of the iris duo, which is also gonna make the iris duo sit out flush. So again, coming out the 11 or the 15 C bead, five 11s, and into the next grouping of C beads. Continue around in the circle, again making sure that those C beads are not to the front, but to the back of the project and then continue on. These C beads then are what we're going to grab onto in order to close up and add our cabochon into position along the front of the cab. I just added in my last grouping of my five 11 O's and I've positioned my cab inside of that netting there in order to kind of push the iris duos to the outer edge and to make sure that all of those C beads stay towards the top. I also have the center row there that I have established and I'm pushing down, which I'm going to be pushing down even more, getting those demi rounds kind of in those little creases to make it sit nice and flat as you work. Along the outer edge then here at the back, as I drop my cab in, I'm going to go around and pick up the central bead of all of those groupings of five. So I'm picking up the third bead in all of those groupings. What that's going to do is create a netting that I'm going to add seed beads in between. The seed beads that we're going to be adding in between are going to be, in this case, it was one eight O seed beading. You can see a little bit of the thread so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add two of our 11 OC beads between each of that third bead. So go ahead and pull up all of those groupings of five if you need to. Position the cab in place. Take your thread and needle after coming out your last grouping of three C beads up to that third 11 O in the first grouping of five that you added. After your thread and needle are out that third bead then, we're again going to catch the third bead on every grouping of five. When doing so, add two more 11s on and sew through just that third bead. 
So just grabbing the third bead and sewing on. Getting the thread and needle then through that third bead. It's going to force that third bead to kind of sit up. to create a nice point. Again, pulling those iris duos into a correct position. Two more 11 O's go on. Over to the next grouping of five. If you can, push that third bead up. So through the third bead and out, giving a nice tight pull. Again, two more through your next one. And you're continuing this the whole way around that inner circle. So you can see it's creating that nice kind of netting effect right there along the back. I'm going to push the iris duos out, making sure that they're sitting flat as I go around and add the two seed beads between all of those third beads or that point, which sits at the bottom of each of the iris duo. So adding in the last two 11 O seed beads, I'll skip over to that third bead in line that my thread was originally coming out of and go through those original two beads. Give a nice tight pull and you can see that nice netting effect that occurred. As I continue, I'm going to reinforce that whole netting, taking my thread and needle through the center two beads that we added as well as through that third bead one more time, which is going to pull this backing in and reinforcing the back. Anytime I'm around the front of the cab, which we'll get a chance to reinforce later, anytime I'm around the front or the back of a cabochon that I am bezeling in, I always make sure to take the thread through at least two times to eliminate the amount of thread that I see exposed, as well as to tighten it up and secure my cabochon in place. Nothing is quite as defeating as you make something and your cab falls out because a thread breaks, which I have had happen with some druzies and other things in the past. So I learned to always take two threads through your central or your innermost lines in both the front and the back of the pendant. Continuing around then as we come through that central row of beads here, like I said, it's going to tighten up and kind of pull those beads into place. Move the tail out of the way if you need to, and pull those beads out. From here, after I get around two complete times, I'm gonna go ahead and move my thread and needle from the back of the project to the outer edge to grab on to the iris duos that are sitting here along the edge. Between the iris duos on the edge, I wanna add some more beads and get ready basically to expand into my next row. My next row of beads that I'm going to be adding are my two beads that sit in a line. These are gonna be my two blue beads that sit. To get the thread and needle to the outer edge of those iris duos in the, lava, or in the lila gold color, go down through the two beads on the side of one of those groupings of three, so you're going down beads four and five, and go through the closest iris duo, through the innermost hole that the thread is already going through. From there, we're gonna step up, going on the outer edge of that iris duo, going from the inner hole to the outer hole. When I'm on the outer hole then, time to add in my next grouping of my iris duos. Again, the next grouping of the iris duos is gonna be that second off color. Here it's the Aztec gold. I'm gonna be adding the blue. The iris duos are added two between each of my iris duo with no seed beads or anything in between. So you can see the two just get added making sure they both sit up straight. Add in two of your iris duos through the bottom hole, and then sew through the next iris duo. Give a nice tight pull so you don't see any thread showing. Continue then around the outer edge, adding in again 24 of these beads, two beads going between each of your iris duos. You can see we're starting to expand the supernova and getting more of our iris duos in place. After we get these iris duos in place then, we'll go back in and add our inner row of our jet bronze iris duos, which sit kind of right in between those nice white baby blue luster beads. 
After you get your last two iris duos in place, you're gonna be coming out the second hole of the Lila Gold Iris Duo from the first row. This Lila Gold Iris Duo is what we started to add our blue outer edge on. We're gonna add our next row of our Iris Duos or another row of that jet bronze that are gonna sit directly on top of those white light blue, that white baby blue there. The Jet Iris Duos, like you can see with the Aztec and the copper, are gonna sit right over the top. To start, you're gonna add a 15 out and an iris duo, again, making sure that the rounded edge is sitting up through the bottom hole, sew through and then add another 15. Taking your thread and needle then, you're gonna skip over the white baby blue luster iris duos that you just added and sew over to the next white lila gold iris duo, again, through that second hole. Pulling the iris duo in place then, you're gonna pull it in so it sits right on top of those baby blue. Again, going around, we'll add in 12 total of these Jet Bronze Iris Duos with a 15-0 between each, catching that outer hole of the white Lila Gold beads that we just added in the blue beads between. So go ahead around the whole outer edge there, letting those sit and hang out between those baby blue. As we go around then we'll reinforce that inner edge and add our 15s on the outer edge of the iris duo beads to get that nice kind of full effect. Putting in the last iris duo then in the jet bronze color, I'm gonna come out that first lila gold iris duo. So into the 15, and the iris duo in the bronze color that we added first. From here, like I said, we're gonna make it have a fuller effect by adding our 15 O's along the sides of the iris duo. Coming out the bottom hole of the bronze iris duo, add three 15s, then go from the bottom hole to the top hole. That's gonna put those three 15s along the outer edge. Again, three more 15s go on, and then you're gonna sew through the iris duo the 15 0, the next lila gold bead, and then get in position to start again. Going through the 15, the jet bronze bead, and decorating the outer edge. Again, three 15s go on. You go from the bottom hole of that jet bronze to the top hole. Coming out the top hole of that jet bronze then, add three more 15s and go into the bottom hole of the Jet Bronze as well as the 15 out that lays next to it, and then also through that next Lila Gold bead. This again will give that fuller appearance and make those beads kind of pop up to make a statement of that row, just like it is along the outer edge here with our orange and copper beads. As we finish up adding our last of our 15 O's along the sides of the iris duos there, you're gonna go through that first iris duo that your thread was coming out of. And then we're also going to progress up through the two blue iris duos, those baby blue luster iris duos. As we progress up the baby blue luster iris duos then we're gonna add in our last row of our iris duos, which are going to be add it in between the two iris duos that sit in a V. Getting my thread and needle again into position, I'm gonna be coming out of the baby blue iris duos and I'm gonna turn the needle stepping up so that it's coming out the top of the iris duo. Coming out then the top of the iris duo, again, it'll expose a little bit of thread on the outer edge, but you won't see it, especially with the color of thread chosen with the color of beads. In between the Y of the iris duos that are created here, the two, we're going to be putting another iris duo. Again, I'm repeating that jet bronze color. As I put the jet bronze in, I'm gonna pick up a demi round, then my iris duo sitting correctly, making sure that it's gonna sit right facing up between. Coming out that iris duo, I wanna add three 
of my 15s, go through the iris duo, give a nice tight pull, so you tighten up any thread that may be exposed. Coming out this iris duo then, after we have the three on the side here, we're going to add along the top six more 15 O's. So you're gonna pick up six 15 O's. I also wanna add just a little bit of that gold color from the center. So instead of adding six 15 O's, I'm gonna add four 15 O's and one 11 O. So I'm adding five beads instead of six. From here, I'm gonna go through the iris duo so that I'm going in a circle. And those beads are just gonna sit right along the top there with that 11 0 being at the peak. Coming out then, I wanna get three more of my 15s on. And go through the iris duo one more time, coming out that bottom hole. That's gonna decorate those three iris duos along that outer edge. Again, you wanna pull tightly to make sure there's no thread exposed. As you're coming out then, you can see there's a little bit of a gap here. We're gonna take our needle and thread, go up through the three 15s on the side, bring the thread out then, give a nice tight pull again, we don't wanna see any thread. Add another 15, go up through the five beads at the top and along that outer edge. Coming out those five 15s at the top, add another 11 to close it up. And then go down the three 11s on the side. So basically what this is doing is creating a seamless line down the side of that iris duo. As we do so then, we're gonna come out the bottom hole of the iris duo and get ready to progress on. So I'm coming out the iris duo, not through the demi round. Coming out the iris duo then, I'm gonna add one more demi round and go through my next blue iris duo. And that's gonna get that outer edge right in place. From here then, you can kind of see those petals starting to form. Between my Y sections, I'm just gonna add one of my 15 OC beads and then progress to the next petal area or the next sun rays, depending on kind of what you're looking at it as. As you come out then, you're gonna do that spin around again, again, excuse me, and I'll go over that one more time. You catch your demi round on and then your iris duo on, making sure that it's sitting in the correct position with that half round kind of facing up. Three 15s go on. You go from the bottom hole to the top hole. Give a nice tight pull, trying to eliminate any extra thread that's showing. On go two 15s, an 11, two 15s. If you don't want the 11 sitting at the top and you want it a little bit more simple, put on six of your 15s. Spinning around then the thread's gonna go in the other side of the iris duo, coming out the same hole. Give a nice tight pull again. Add three more of your 15s and sew back through that first hole. From here, you're gonna sew along that upper line of seed beads going through the three, coming out, adding one more 15, up through the five at the top or six if you're using all 15s. When you're out the top beads then, you're gonna go ahead and add one more 11, or I'm sorry, one more 15 rather and come down those three on this side and out. Once you're out those three on the side, you're gonna take your thread and needle and go through the iris duo. 
when you're at the iris duo then it's time to put on your next demi round and go into your next iris duo in between those y sections go ahead and add another 15 and then on to the next if you want to simplify it's a little bit more threading but I think it's kind of easier to comprehend you can also grab your demi round your iris duo and then your demi round and then come back through the blue and go to the next bead after you have all of those iris duos in place then you can come back and repeat which will reinforce the outer edge so you'll come back around the entire circle here and add in those seed beads so whichever way you want to do you can either go ahead and add them in to start or you can do it like this second where you're just going around the outer edge to keep it simplified and then from there go back and do your circling around and sewing back through once you finish adding all of the seed beads to the outer edge of your pendant we're going to work our way back to the middle you can see I have middle accent beads here that I've added in before going through the center core and reinforcing the loop. Because we're already on the outside of the project, it's a good time to actually go in and add your bail. You can add the bail a number of different ways. Here I have a bail that sits along the back, so that way if you would want to, you can change it so that it goes off to the side like this, or I have it that you can sit flush. You could also use a pre-manufactured bail or do a herringbone peyote kind of triangle bail. It's up to you a bunch of different ways. The other thing that you could do, I've always thought this was a really nice pin. You could actually glue this onto a pin backing as well. So there's an idea for you. While I'm on this outer edge, I'm going to, like I said, work my way to the inner edge in order to add my seed beads here in the middle as well as reinforce the middle. While I'm on that outer edge, I'm coming out my last iris duo. I'm going to go through the demi round and through the last baby blue iris duo. Reversing the thread, then I'm going to go from the outer or the outermost hole to the innermost hole and through that iris duo and out. That's going to, again, reverse the thread a little bit on the side there. You won't see it, though, because of the coloring. Going then back through that same iris duo, I'm going to go till my thread is coming out from the bottom hole of the blue iris duo to the top hole of the lila gold iris duo. And then out. Taking my thread and needle then, I'm going to kind of poke it towards the back, making sure that I'm not going into or connecting on any bridge threads whatsoever because I don't want to see any extra thread. So I'm just poking it to the back, but it's still coming out in that same location between the lila gold and the blue. From here, I'll add my clasp closure. For the clasp closure, I'm going to start with two of my 15s on my thread. Then I'm going to add eight of my 11 O seed beads. I'm going to finish then with two more 15s. Push that all down next to your pendant and sew through that same lila gold iris duo coming in from the other side. So that way when you pull the thread, you're going to make it loop along the back. Here I have a hidden bail then, so that way when I wear it, I can actually wear it and the string will be kind of hidden in the back. From here, flipping it over, I'm just going to reinforce, again taking the thread from the front, just to the back, and then reinforcing these beads because it is my bail. I'm going to go back through all of these beads, the 15s and the 11s, and just restitch there. From here then, after reinforcing the bail, I'm going to bring my thread and needle so that it's exiting towards the front 
of my pendant, or of the capuchon rather. I'm going down through the actual bail portion and back through then that same iris duo as well. Give a nice tight pull so you don't have any extra thread exposed. Like I said, back through that same iris duo through the same hole. As I get back through that iris duo then, my thread kind of naturally came out the front. I'm going to take the thread and bring it out that same iris duo, again reversing the thread direction, and it's going to stick out a little bit on the side. Once I'm out here, I'm going to start decorating the middle of the pendant. So the middle of the pendant is made up of these iris duos here in the bronze color, but it's flanked on the side by three of my demi rounds, almost forming a diamond at each little angle here. What I'm going to do is go up those three demi rounds and come out between the iris duos. When I come out the iris, the demi rounds there, I want you to add three 11 -0 or I'm sorry, three 15 OC beads. Go through the 11 O that's at the center core here, going in on the same side that of the bead that your thread is coming in from. When I come out the 11 O, I'm gonna go back through the first two 15 OC beads. That's gonna pull them kind of towards the middle so they sit right underneath that 11 O. From there then, give a nice tight pull and grab one more 15. Taking your thread and needle then, you're going to go down through the next side of the demi rounds and out. That makes it sit just like a little Y right in there with the two beads that are in the center having the thread going through both up and back and then separating out the side. As I come out the bottom here and separate out the side, I'm going to progress by going through the 11 that sits right below it and then back up through my next collection of my demi round beads. As I come out the collection of the demi round beads then, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to add in my three 15s. Then after adding in those three 15s, go up to the center 11. This is one of the reasons that we didn't go through and reinforce this yet because I do want a little bit of play there along the center. Going through that center 11 then, we're going to pull those seed beads in and kind of force them in nice and tight there. Once they're forced in nice and tight, go back through the first two, going through the side, add one more 15, and then down the demi rounds on the other side. Down the demi rounds on the other side then. We're going to pick up the 11 O that sits below it, which is that gold bead. It's kind of hidden underneath, so it's a little bit hard to see on camera. But I'm going to sew through that 11 O. And then as I sew through that 11 O, I'm going to go back up the demi rounds along the side here. And when I come out the demi rounds along the side, or the demi, the 11 demis here on the side, I'm going to sew up and then continue in building that Y. You're gonna go the whole way around the pendant, adding in those seed beads to really pull in the casing of that bezel. And then after that is pulled in and added, we're gonna reinforce our center line. As you finish going around and connecting in all of those demi rounds and pulling up the middle, again, what we want to do is we want to reinforce that middle line. So right now my thread and needle are coming out kind of right along the back here, going through the last of the 11 O's. I'm going to take it to the front, making sure that it's not catching on anything here, like my bail. Bringing it to the front then, I want you to go up one of those last sections of your demi rounds, come up to the middle, opposite way, Sorry about that. Go ahead and finish this here. 
going through the demi round then as you finish. You want to go through your last 11 out, kind of flipping over there. Sorry, I thought I had already done that. Go through the last 11 out and then proceed up just like as if you were getting ready to do the next section. Flipping over to the front then, go up through those that first section of demi rounds, up through your 150Y that you created, and then right into the center. From here then, like I said, get in on that center bead, and then you're gonna wiggle your way around through that whole center section. After reinforcing the whole center section, you are going to want your thread to get back to your stop bead, meaning kind of sewing back right to that point where the stop bead is. We'll get the thread ends together in the same place, and then we'll do a nice tie off and tie off our thread ends and finish our pendant. After you burn off all your thread ends, your pendant is completed and you can see kind of the different texture and shape that even doing matte versus shiny and bright versus more muted tones can make on the appearance of the pendant. Again, I have a pendant uh, bail that comes out from the bezel that's a little bit longer or one that's hiding in the back that's a little bit shorter and can be used then for a piece of cording or ribbon. I think this necklace would look really pretty on ribbon to go through that you could do this pendant as well. The other thing, like I said, it would look really nice as an actual brooch or a pin, so check that out as well. If you need any of the materials again, you can go back to the beginning of the video where we list it off for you. Also, right at the date stamp at the bottom of the video that says when the video was produced, Below that again, there's that uh, link that says show more. Click on that and it'll give you a listing and a link to all the different products to purchase from me online as well. If you want to, you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. You'll get regular updates then when I get a chance to do a video for you guys, as well as some of our wonderful contributors. You can also get regular emails from us when we publish things on the new beads and new materials, as well as what's going on kind of in the beading world in what's going on at Potomac Beads. You can also join us on Facebook and at PotomacBeads.com. You can check out our Instagram and our Pinterest as well as if you'd like to on Facebook join our members only group for beading and jewelry making. There you get asked to become a member and you get to interact with a wonderful group of people that love to design, love to make jewelry, love to share all their knowledge and wisdom as well. It's a wonderful group of people that really, really inspire me and I know inspire a lot of um, the viewers as well. As always, thank you so, so, so much for watching and have fun making this supernova pendant.